Okay, if I rotate to the back, the next feature I need to create is a little tab that we want to drop off this edge that's going to tuck in behind this um, bottom, um, the bottom part here. Um, I also want this tab, one of my goals is that, it, that we make sure we pick up this whole location so we can throw a fastener through there. To do this, I'm going to just use the edge flange tool again. So I'll grab the edge, let's bring it down some distance. Doesn't look much like a little tab to tuck in there yet, does it? But what we can do is over here in my properties, right there, I can say, let's edit the flange profile. So currently it's just a big rectangle. You can really add any shape you want to this. Um, also notice that the corner is constrained right up here. But check this out. If I just grab that point and drag it away from the corner, it breaks that constraint. Okay, So that's a little shortcut to just busting that constraint out of there. Next, I want to make sure that this um, tab always fits in that slot. So I'll just make a relationship between the, the geometry and the sketch and the slot. Of course, do the right thing and put a dimension in here. About 12 should do it. Then I'll grab the edge of this hole and we'll convert that. That'll be void of material. All right, let's go back and have a look at the preview. Some additional work I still need to do on this thing. It doesn't sit behind uh, the wall of the bottom part yet. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use the offset function to give it some offset. It's a nice little tool. You'll notice it, it now it's offsetting from the edge. I want to make that offset one millimeter toward the inside and then make sure that that bend is totally inside the edge. And that should do it. Okay. You can see that it automatically builds relief when needed. And here is that void of material in the tab so we can you know, pick up this hole and, and throw something in there to, to fasten these parts together. All right, one of the key uh, features of doing this top-down design is when we make modifications. For example, if I change the box dimensions, let's say you know, we, we make this something else, make it a little bit longer or higher or, you know, in this case, change either the height, width, or depth. It doesn't really matter. My top cover is always going to adjust to it so what it does is it goes through and it's you know looking at all the things that it needs to build and it just builds them for me. So all the flanges are still correct size. We don't have anything interfering. So that's why we do top level design so we can make changes to even the single part very quickly but all other parts that need to move um, make their adjustments as well. The other thing um, we can do, we, we've, we've built all these features in the context of the assembly but I can always open it up in its own window and work on it here. It doesn't really make any difference where I do my work.